piglet, being such a very small animal, is very afraid of the rainstorm. How will Pooh Bear and his friends save him? A. A. Milne, today on the Classic Tales podcast. Welcome to the Classic Tales Podcast. Thank you for listening. We are proudly supported by our listeners. Many, many thanks to our financial supporters who pitch in every month to keep us afloat. If you enjoy the show, please sign up to be a supporter for as little as $5 a month. We give you a monthly coupon code every month as a thank you. Go to ClassicTalesAudiobooks.com and become a financial supporter today. And please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much. I'm going to try a new thing. I'm going to have a Facebook Live event where we can get together and discuss the things we liked about Winnie the Pooh and whatever else might come up. Everyone is invited. It will be on Wednesday, February 2nd at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Head on over to our Facebook page and tap the appropriate link. I hope to see you there. And if this goes well, maybe we can do some more. And now, Winnie the Pooh, Part 4 of 4, by A. A. Milne. Chapter 9 in which Piglet is entirely surrounded by water. It rained, and it rained, and it rained. Piglet told himself that never in all his life, and he was goodness knows how old, three was it, or four, never had he seen so much rain, days and days and days. If only, he thought, as he looked out of the window, I had been in Pooh's house, or Christopher Robin's house, or Rabbit's house when it began to rain. Then I should have had company all this time, instead of being here all alone, with nothing to do except wonder when it will stop. And he imagined himself with Pooh, saying, Did you ever see such rain, Pooh? And Pooh saying, Isn't it awful, Piglet? And Piglet saying, I wonder how it is over Christopher Robin's way and Pooh saying, I should think poor old Rabbit is about flooded out by this time. It would have been jolly to talk like this, and really it wasn't much good having anything exciting like floods if you couldn't share them with somebody, for it was rather exciting. The little dry ditches in which Piglet had nosed about so often had become streams. The little streams across which he had splashed were rivers, and the river between whose steep banks they had played so happily, had sprawled out of its own bed, and was taking up so much room everywhere, that Piglet was beginning to wonder whether it would be coming into his bed soon. It's a little anxious, he said to himself, to be a very small animal entirely surrounded by water. Christopher Robin and Pooh could escape by climbing trees, and Kanga could escape by jumping and Rabbit could escape by burrowing, and Owl could escape by flying, and Eeyore could escape by by making a loud noise until rescued. And here am I, surrounded by water, and I can't do anything. It went on raining, and every day the water got a little higher, until now it was nearly up to Piglet's window, and still he hadn't done anything. There's Pooh, he thought to himself, Pooh hasn't much brain, but he never comes to any harm. He does silly things, and they turn out right. There's Owl. Owl hasn't exactly got brain, but he knows things. He would know the right thing to do when surrounded by water. There's Rabbit. He hasn't learnt in books, but he can always think of a clever plan. There's Kanga. She isn't clever, Kanga isn't, but she would be so anxious about Rue that she would do a good thing to do without thinking about it. And then there's Eeyore, and Eeyore is so miserable anyhow that he wouldn't mind about this. 
but I wonder what Christopher Robin would do. Then suddenly he remembered a story which Christopher Robin had told him, about a man on a desert island who had written something in a bottle and thrown it in the sea, and Piglet thought that if he wrote something in a bottle and threw it in the water, perhaps somebody would come and rescue him. He left the window and began to search his house, all of it that wasn't under water, and at last found a pencil and a small piece of dry paper and a bottle with a cork to it. And he wrote on one side of the paper, Help! Piglet! Me! And on the other side, It's me! Piglet! Help! Help! Then he put the paper in the bottle, and he corked the bottle up as tightly as he could, and he leant out of his window as far as he could lean without falling in, and he threw the bottle as far as he could throw. Splash! And in a little while it bobbed up again on the water and he watched it floating slowly away in the distance, until his eyes ached with looking, and sometimes he thought it was the bottle, and sometimes he thought it was just a ripple on the water which he was following, and then suddenly he knew that he would never see it again, and that he had done all that he could do to save himself. So now, he thought, somebody else will have to do something, and I hope they will do it soon, because if they don't, I shall have to swim, which I can't, so I hope they do it soon. And then he gave a very long sigh, and said, I wish Pooh were here. It's so much more friendly with two. When the rain began, Pooh was asleep. It rained, and it rained, and it rained. And he slept, and he slept, and he slept. He had had a tiring day. You remember how he discovered the North Pole. Well, he was so proud of this that he asked Christopher Robin, if there were any other poles such as a bear of little brain might discover. There's a south pole, said Christopher Robin, and I expect there's an east pole and a west pole, though people don't like talking about them. Pooh was very excited when he heard this, and suggested that they should have an expedition to discover the east pole. But Christopher Robin had thought of something else to do with Kanga, so Pooh went out to discover the east pole by himself. Whether he discovered it or not, I forget. But he was so tired when he got home, that in the very middle of his supper, after he had been eating for little more than half an hour, he fell fast asleep in his chair, and slept and slept and slept. Then suddenly he was dreaming. He was at the East Pole, and it was a very cold pole, with the coldest sort of snow and ice all over it. He had found a beehive to sleep in, but there wasn't room for his legs, so he had left them outside, and wild woozles, such as inhabit the East Pole, came and nibbled all the fur off his legs to make nests for their young. And the more they nibbled, the colder his legs got, until suddenly he woke up with a hoe, oh! and there he was, sitting in his chair with his feet in the water, and water all round him. He splashed to his door and looked out. This is serious, said Pooh. I must have an escape. So he took his largest pot of honey and escaped with it to a broad branch of his tree, well above the water. Then he climbed down again and escaped with another pot. And when the whole escape was finished, there was Pooh sitting on his branch, dangling his legs, and there beside him were ten pots of honey. Two days later... There was Pooh, sitting on his branch, dangling his legs, and there beside him were four pots of honey. Three days later, there was Pooh, sitting on his branch, dangling his legs, and there beside him was one pot of honey. Four days later, there was Pooh. And it was on the morning of the fourth day that Piglet's bottle came floating past him, and with one loud cry of, Honey! Pooh plunged into the water seized the bottle, and struggled back to his tree again. Bother, said Pooh as he opened it. All that wet for nothing. What's that bit of paper doing? He took it out and looked at it. It's a message, he said to himself. That's what it is. And that letter is a P. And so is that. And so is that. And P means Pooh. So it's a very important message to me, and I can't read it. 
I must find Christopher Robin or Owl or Piglet, one of those clever readers who can read things, and they will tell me what this message means. Only I can't swim. Bother. Then he had an idea, and I think that for a bear of very little brain it was a good idea. He said to himself, If a bottle can float, then a jar can float, and if a jar floats, I can sit on the top of it, if it's a very big jar. So he took his biggest jar and corked it up. All boats have to have a name, he said, so I shall call mine the Floating Bear. And with these words he dropped his boat into the water and jumped in after it. For a little while Pooh and the Floating Bear were uncertain as to which of them was meant to be on the top, but after trying one or two different positions, they settled down with the floating bear underneath, and Pooh triumphantly astride it, paddling vigorously with his feet. Christopher Robin lived at the very top of the forest. It rained, and it rained, and it rained. But the water couldn't come up to his house. It was rather jolly to look down into the valleys and see the water all round him. But it rained so hard that he stayed indoors most of the time and thought about things. Every morning he went out with his umbrella and put a stick in the place where the water came up to, and every next morning he went out and couldn't see his stick any more, so he put another stick in the place where the water came up to, and then he walked home again, and each morning he had a shorter way to walk than he had had the morning before. On the morning of the fifth day he saw the water all round him, and he knew that for the first time in his life he was on a real island, which is very exciting. It was on this morning that Owl came flying over the water to say, How do you do? to his friend Christopher Robin. I say, Owl, said Christopher Robin, isn't this fun? I'm on an island. The atmospheric conditions have been very unfavourable lately, said Owl. The what? It has been raining, explained Owl. Yes, said Christopher Robin. It has. The flood level has reached an unprecedented height. The who? There's a lot of water about, explained Owl. Yes, said Christopher Robin. There is. However, the prospects are rapidly becoming more favourable. At any moment... Have you seen Pooh? No, at any moment... I hope he's all right, said Christopher Robin. I've been wondering about him. I expect Piglet's with him. Do you think they're all right, Owl? I expect so. You see, at any moment, do go and see, Owl, because Pooh hasn't got very much brain and might do something silly, and I do love him so, Owl. Do you see, Owl? That's all right, said Owl. I'll go. Back directly. And he flew off. In a little while, he was back again. Pooh isn't there, he said. Not there. He's been there. He's been sitting on a branch of his tree outside his house with nine pots of honey. But he isn't there now. Oh, Pooh, cried Christopher Robin. Where are you? Here I am, said a growly voice behind him. Pooh! They rushed into each other's arms. How did you get here, Pooh? asked Christopher Robin when he was ready to talk again. On my boat, said Pooh proudly. I had a very important message sent me in a bottle, and owing to having got some water in my eyes, I couldn't read it, so I brought it to you, on my boat. With these proud words he gave Christopher Robin the message. But it's from Piglet, cried Christopher Robin when he had read it. Isn't there anything about Pooh in it? asked Bear, looking over his shoulder. Christopher Robin read the message aloud. Oh, are those peas piglets? I thought they were Poohs. You must rescue him at once. I thought it was with you, Pooh. Owl, could you rescue him on your back? I don't think so, said Owl, after grave thought. It is doubtful if the necessary dorsal muscles. Then would you fly to him at once and say that rescue is coming? And Pooh and I will think of a rescue and come as quick as ever we can. Oh, don't talk, Owl. Go on quick. And still thinking of something to say, Owl flew off. Now then, Pooh, said Christopher Robin, 
where's your boat? I ought to say, explained Pooh as they walked down to the shore of the island, that it isn't just an ordinary sort of boat. Sometimes it's a boat, and sometimes it's more of an accident. It all depends. Depends on what? On whether I'm on top of it or underneath it. Oh, well, where is it? There, said Pooh, pointing proudly to the floating bear. It wasn't what Christopher Robin expected, and the more he looked at it, the more he thought what a brave and clever bear Pooh was. And the more Christopher Robin thought this, the more Pooh looked modestly down his nose and tried to pretend he wasn't. But it's too small for the two of us, said Christopher Robin sadly. Three of us with Piglet. That makes it smaller still. Oh, Pooh Bear, what shall we do? And then this bear, Pooh Bear, Winnie the Pooh, F.O.P., friend of Piglet's, R.C., Rabbit's Companion, P.D., Pole Discoverer, E.C. and T.F., Eeyore's Comforter and Tail Finder, in fact, Pooh himself, said something so clever that Christopher Robin could only look at him with mouth open and eyes staring, wondering if this was really the bear of very little brain whom he had known and loved so long. We might go in your umbrella, said Pooh. Eh? We might go in your umbrella, said Pooh. We might go in your umbrella, said Pooh. <laughs> for suddenly Christopher Robin saw that they might. He opened his umbrella and put it point downwards in the water. It floated, but wobbled. Pooh got in. He was just beginning to say that it was all right now, when he found that it wasn't. So after a short drink, which he didn't really want, he waded back to Christopher Robin. Then they both got in together, and it wobbled no longer. I shall call this boat the brain of Pooh, said Christopher Robin, and the brain of Pooh set sail forthwith in a southwesterly direction, revolving gracefully. You can imagine Piglet's joy when at last the ship came in sight of him. In after years he liked to think that he had been in very great danger during the terrible flood, but the only danger he had really been in was the last half hour of his imprisonment, when Owl, who had just flown up, sat on a branch of his tree to comfort him, and told him a very long story about an aunt who had once laid a seagull's egg by mistake. And the story went on and on, rather like this sentence, until Piglet, who was listening out of his window without much hope, went to sleep quietly and naturally, slipping slowly out of the window towards the water, until he was only hanging on by his toes, at which moment, luckily, a sudden, loud squawk from Owl, which was really part of the story, being what his aunt said, woke the piglet up, and just gave him time to jerk himself back into safety, and say, How oh, interesting! And did she? When, well, you can imagine his joy, when at last he saw the good ship Brain of Pooh, Captain C. Robin, first mate, Pea Bear, coming over the sea to rescue him and as that is really the end of the story, and I am very tired after that last sentence, I think I shall stop there. Chapter 10 In which Christopher Robin gives a poo party, and we say goodbye. One day, when the sun had come back over the forest, bringing with it the scent of May, and all the streams of the forest were tinkling happily to find themselves their own pretty shape again, and the little pools lay dreaming of the life they had seen, and the big things they had done, and in the warmth and quiet of the forest, the cuckoo was trying over his voice carefully, and listening to see if he liked it, and wood pigeons were complaining gently to themselves in their lazy, comfortable way that it was the other fellow's fault, but it didn't matter very much. On such a day as this, Christopher Robin whistled in a special way he had, and Owl came flying out of the hundred-acre wood to see what was wanted. Owl, said Christopher Robin, I'm going to give a party. You are, are you? said Owl. And it's to be a special sort of party, because it's because of what Pooh did 
when he did what he did to save Piglet from the flood. Oh, that's what it's for, is it? said Owl. Yes. So will you tell Pooh as quickly as you can and all the others, because it will be tomorrow. Oh, it will, will it? said Owl, still being as helpful as possible. So will you go and tell them, Owl? Owl tried to think of something very wise to say, but couldn't, so he flew off to tell the others. And the first person he told was Pooh. Pooh, he said, Christopher Robin is giving a party. Who? said Pooh. And then seeing that Owl expected him to say something else, he said, Will there be those little cake things with pink sugar icing? Owl felt that it was rather beneath him to talk about little cake things with pink sugar icing, so he told Pooh exactly what Christopher Robin had said and flew off to Eeyore. Party for me, thought Pooh to himself. How grand! And he began to wonder if all the other animals would know that it was a special Pooh party, and if Christopher Robin had told them about the floating bear and the brain of Pooh, and all the wonderful ships he had invented and sailed on and he began to think how awful it would be if everybody had forgotten about it, and nobody quite knew what the party was for. And the more he thought like this, the more the party got muddled in his mind, like a dream when nothing goes right. And the dream began to sing itself over in his head until it became a sort of song. It was an anxious Pooh song. Three cheers for Pooh. For who? For Pooh. Why, what did he do? I thought you knew. He saved his friend from a wetting. Three cheers for Bear. For where? For Bear. He couldn't swim, but he rescued him. He rescued who? Oh, listen, do. I am talking of Pooh. Of who? Of Pooh. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Well, Pooh was a bear of enormous brain. I just say it again. Of enormous brain. Of enormous what? Well, he ate a lot, and I don't know if he could swim or not, but he managed to float on a sort of boat. On a sort of what? Well, a sort of pot. So now let's give him three hearty cheers. So now let's give him three hearty witches? And hope he'll be with us for years and years, and grow in health and wisdom and riches. Three cheers for Pooh. For who? For Pooh. Three cheers for Bear. For where? For Bear. Three cheers for the wonderful Winnie the Pooh. And just tell me, somebody, what did he do? While this was going on inside him, Owl was talking to Eeyore. Eeyore, said Owl, Christopher Robin is giving a party. Very interesting, said Eeyore. I suppose they will be sending me down the odd bits which got trodden on, kind and thoughtful. Not at all. Don't mention it. There is an invitation for you. What's that like? An invitation. Yes, I heard you. Who dropped it? This isn't anything to eat. It's asking you to the party. Tomorrow. Eeyore shook his head slowly. You mean Piglet? The little fellow? with the excited ears, as Piglet. I'll tell him. No, no, said Owl, getting quite fussy. It's you. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Christopher Robin said, all of them, tell all of them. All of them, except Eeyore? All of them, said Owl, sulkily. Ah, said Eeyore. A mistake, no doubt. But still, I shall come. Only don't blame me if it rains. But it didn't rain. Christopher Robin had made a long table out of some long pieces of wood, and they all sat round it. Christopher Robin sat at one end, and Pooh sat at the other, and between them, on one side, were Owl and Eeyore and Piglet, and between them, on the other side, were Rabbit and Roo and Kanga, and all Rabbit's friends and relations spread themselves about on the grass, and waited hopefully in case anybody spoke to them, or dropped anything, or asked them the time. It was the first party to which Roo had ever been, and he was very excited. As soon as ever they had sat down, he began to talk. Hello, Pooh, he squeaked. 
Hello, Roo, said Pooh. Roo jumped up and down in his seat for a little while, and then began again. Hello, Piglet, he squeaked. Piglet waved a paw at him, being too busy to say anything. Hello, Eeyore, said Roo. Eeyore nodded gloomily at him. It will rain soon, you see if it doesn't, he said. Roo looked to see if it didn't, and it didn't. So he said, Hello, Owl. And Owl said, Hello, my little fellow, in a kindly way, and went on telling Christopher Robin about an accident which had nearly happened to a friend of his whom Christopher Robin didn't know. And Kanga said to Roo, Drink up your milk first, dear, and talk afterwards. So Roo, who was drinking his milk, tried to say that he could do both at once, and had to be patted on the back and dried for quite a long time afterwards. When they had all nearly eaten enough, Christopher Robin banged on the table with his spoon, and everybody stopped talking and was very silent, except Roo, who was just finishing a loud attack of hiccups and trying to look as if it was one of Rabbit's relations. This party, said Christopher Robin, is a party because of what someone did, and we all know who it was, and it's his party because of what he did, and I've got a present for him, and here it is. Then he felt about a little and whispered, Where is it? While he was looking, Eeyore coughed in an impressive way and began to speak. Friends, he said, including Oddman's, it is a great pleasure, or perhaps I'd better say, it has been a pleasure so far to see you at my party. What I did was nothing, any of you, except Rabbit and Owl and Kanga, would have done the same, oh, and Pooh. My remarks do not, of course, apply to Piglet and Roo, because they are too small. Any of you would have done the same, but it just happened to be me. It was not, I need hardly say, with an idea of getting what Christopher Robin is looking for now. And he put his front leg to his mouth and said in a loud whisper, Try under the table. That I did what I did, but because I feel that we should all do what we can to help. I feel that we should all... <coughs> said Rue accidentally. Rue, dear, said Kanga reproachfully. Was it me? asked Roo, a little surprised. "'What's Eeyore talking about?' Piglet whispered to Pooh. "'I don't know,' said Pooh rather dolefully. "'I thought this was your party. I thought it was once, but I suppose it isn't.' "'I'd sooner it was yours than yours,' said Piglet. "'So would I,' said Pooh. Yeah. said Roo again. "'As I was saying,' said Eeyore, loudly and sternly. As I was saying when I was interrupted by various loud sounds, I feel that... Here it is, cried Christopher Robin excitedly. Pass it down to silly old Pooh. It's for Pooh. For Pooh? said Eeyore. Of course it is. The best bear in all the world. I might have known, said Eeyore. After all, one can't complain. I have my friends. Somebody spoke to me only yesterday, and it was last week or the week before that, Rabbit bumped into me and said, Bother! The social round. Always something going on. Nobody was listening, for they were all saying, Open it, Pooh. What is it, Pooh? I know what it is. No, you don't. And other helpful remarks of this sort. And of course, Pooh was opening it as quickly as ever he could but without cutting the string, because you never know when a bit of string might be useful. At last it was undone. When Pooh saw what it was, he nearly fell down he was so pleased. It was a special pencil case. There were pencils in it marked B for bear, and pencils marked HB for helping bear, and pencils marked BB for brave bear. There was a knife for sharpening the pencils, and India rubber for rubbing out anything which you had spelt wrong, and a ruler for ruling lines for the words to walk on, and inches marked on the ruler, 
in case you wanted to know how many inches anything was, and blue pencils and red pencils and green pencils for saying special things in blue and red and green. And all these lovely things were in little pockets of their own, in a special case which shut with a click when you clicked it. And they were all for Pooh. Oh, said Pooh. Oh, Pooh, said everybody else except Eeyore. Thank you, growled Pooh. But Eeyore was saying to himself, This writing business, pencils and what not. Overrated, if you ask me. Silly stuff. Nothing in it. Later on, when they had all said goodbye and thank you to Christopher Robin, Pooh and Piglet walked home thoughtfully together in the golden evening, and for a long time they were silent. When you wake up in the morning, Pooh, said Piglet at last, what the first thing you say to yourself? What's for breakfast? said Pooh. What do you say, Piglet? I say, I wonder what's going to happen exciting today, said Piglet. Pooh nodded thoughtfully. It's the same thing, he said. And what did happen? asked Christopher Robin. When? Next morning. I don't know. Could you think and tell me and Pooh some time? If you wanted it very much. Pooh does, said Christopher Robin. He gave a deep sigh, picked his bear up by the leg, and walked off to the door trailing Winnie the Pooh behind him. At the door he turned and said, Coming to see me have my bath? I might, I said. Was Pooh's pencil case any better than mine? It was just the same, I said. He nodded and went out, and in a moment I heard Winnie the Pooh bump, 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 going up the stairs behind him. This is B.J. Harrison. I hope you've enjoyed this unabridged production of Winnie the Pooh, Part 4 of 4 by A.A. A. Milne. If you have enjoyed this book, please become a financial supporter by visiting our website at classictalesaudiobooks.com. Become a monthly supporter for as little as $5 a month, and we'll send you a monthly coupon code as a thank you. And please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps other folks to find our show. Thank you for joining me today and allowing classic literature to awaken your better self. Please join me every week and we'll rediscover the greatest stories ever put to paper. Music